minute we have not had a time in a very good while so i i'm so grateful yes i have been absolutely busy 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 uh working on dissertations being on dissertation hiatuses having more meetings about dissertation i'm in the home stretch of the dissertation and everybody's like how are you doing your show and still doing a dissertation it's yeah after a while you get tired of saying the d word it's like oh my gosh you feel like you're using profanity uh but it's so it's so wonderful to see all of you. Thank you for joining me tonight. I, I I'm so excited uh, to be back. Um, we are going to kick off the show and stuff like that on Tuesdays, um, and we will kick back in, on Thursdays uh, when we approach fall. So as a uh, course, we move into a new season. Just get prepared. Some things are going to be adjusting, but this is the time for us to just kind of keep it real, keep it raw. Um, you know, tell it like it is. Where am I right now? Um, I'm in Atlanta. Um, and out here trying to um have a you know a little rest restful moment, but not really necessarily full of rest, because I still have to work on the the D word, the D word. But we know what we're talking about, right? Uh and so uh one of the things that I just wanna like really just say how grateful I am for everyone's support uh during this time. Um, and it has really been nice, uh, to just kind of, you know, finally almost be in the process of being finished. Um, so I thought to myself, you know, as I've been talking to my team and, and, and we've been sitting together, like what was next, you know, and I was like, I really just miss, you know, connecting. I can have a lot of guests on here, but I mean, I'll be transparent with you. I love spending time with y'all and I love spending time with with, with what's happening in our climate. Right now it's Pride Month. So yes, shout out to like my queer possibility family. Yes, queer possibilities. Like we make a lot of things turn around. L listen to people like Billy Porter speaking about uh, being HIV positive, taking back in many ways, reclaiming spirituality and the practice of it for queer folk, which many who value spirituality and spiritual practice or religious formations are, trust me, it is needed here, you know? And, and I think in many ways, like this in many ways, this, this, this show, this moment together is so, you know, is in many ways for, for some people also a, a, a bit of a spiritual practice, a moment to kind of gather themselves together. Um, it, it is for me. Uh, I know that's why I miss y'all, you know, it definitely, Lena, happy pride to you as well. Um, and so, um, you know, we've got that going on. We, we, we've, we've been listening to, of course, um, what's been going on in, in Israel and Palestine. And we've been um, facing more issues around race. And, and, and it just seems that that there's so many things to possibly talk about. And there's so many places that we could possibly go and visit. But one of the things that I want to just offer us today is simply remaining authentic to ourselves, grounding ourselves, centering ourselves, whatever that looks like. Some of us are on our on our vacation. Some of us are planning them because we're like we have given everybody else our time, our energy our capacity and you know i think one of the most important things about authenticity as i have always visited you know it is it is deeply it is deeply about having a relationship with self and that relationship with self is not rooted in selfishness if anything it is rooted more so in understanding how to be in right relationship with yourself shows you how to be in right relationship with others, right? 
being in right relationship with yourself reveals to you how you can be in right relationship with others. It is because of the need to constantly honor the experience that you are having. It is because you decide to really in many ways do a check and balance, or like I say, a kind of body, body graph, knowing where areas are, you know, where are you tired? Where are you hurting? Where are you, you know, we don't get a chance to do that. Um, and, and so in many ways, it's a moment to really look at where you are within your own relationship. I mean, as we talk about, as we think about Pride Month, I mean, that, I mean, this whole entire month is about relationship, not just relationship with sexuality or sexual expression, but also r relationality between, between you and, and someone else significant. Um, and so I, I think that that's, that's one of the things that for me, you know, I, I remember, I remember when I was, you know, I I just come from seminary after my first semester. I had studied, uh, I finished studying queer liberation. Yes, queer liberation, it's a real thing. Uh, queer liberation theology. Uh, I finished reading Patrick Chan, I finished, and, and, and I never, for years, never had a theology, never had a theology on how to affirm myself as a queer person. I never had a language other than what was biblically constructed for me. And, you know, that being queer or being gay or being same gender loving and thinking outside of a spectrum of binaries was anything other than demonic or anything other than not socially respectable, socially respectable, demonic. So to think outside of that, for me, in many ways, to always think outside of that is, it was, was, was became, became a challenge when I, when I got into seminary and I was able to, to figure out ways to, in many ways, renegotiate the social respectability the the and, and 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 change in many ways my these demonic authorities into right heavenly authorities for those who need it um i found a way to make sure that i just in were in the words of billy porter found ways to reclaim my spirituality, my spiritual dignity, the way in which I was situated and grounded myself and became more authentic with myself. A lot of us don't get a chance to do that. I run into a lot of, a lot of my, my queer siblings who actually prefer not to engage uh, religious formation or spiritual formation because of the harm that was done. I experience a lot of folk who are not interested and in maybe even, you know, trying to step outside of that because they in many ways are experiencing internalized homophobia and they are reminded all the time that they will, you know, they'll keep going to, you know, their spiritual sanctuary and they will sit in a place where they are like, I'd rather be in my sanctuary and I'd rather be in my religious formation, even if I'm gonna go to hell. And I just wanna, in this space, let you know that whether you are in the space where it's like, I don't need the context of religion to affirm who I am, how I, I wanna sit in this spiritual space, even if it costs me an idea around my life as eternity. Here, I wish you freedom. 
I wish you freedom. With your pride, I wish you freedom. The agency to reclaim your narrative, no matter where you rest, no matter what it looks like. For someone who had just finished reading Patrick Chen, for, for someone who had just finished reading Liberation in the Sheets, for someone who had read ethical non-monogamy books in multiple, you know, ethical slut, you name it. I've been re I've read it all when it comes down to this. And I still keep reading and, and I keep evolving. Something about queer possibility is very, very powerful. It's the moment where you become courageously, courageously ignited to fall in love with yourself and invite others to love you because you have fallen in love with yourself. You invite others to love you because you have fallen in love with yourself. It is the most powerful, significant thing to do. It is that, that in many ways, I, I really have to say, when we think about Montero, when we think about all of, uh, uh, if for those who have not watched Pose in their final season as they conclude, uh, please do. Not just because of the history, but it is beautiful to see that in many ways the envelope of our social cultural norms are being pushed and they are not being pushed in ways that are necessarily troubling, but they are being pushed and challenged in ways that will hopefully offer us a new view of living in a full ethical capacity. I don't think we know our full ethical capacity. I don't think we do. And I've sat with that many times because I have to ask myself that question, what is my, my, my actual ethical capacity and how can I, for me, as a queer person who works as clergy, an ethical clergy, how do I in many ways queer my ethic so that it becomes expansive? that my spirit becomes like Stonewall that wants to first be the, be the first one to throw the brick when everybody else is against it. Have you ever just wanted to pick up the brick and throw it? Be like Marsha, John, Mar Marsha P. Johnson and throw the brick that breaks into a whole new arena of battle that tells everyone else that's surrounding and just watching to stop watching and get activated. Have you ever wanted to just throw the brick? Some of us are already throwing bricks and we've been throwing them and we've been and, and we keep throwing them in hopes, not that somebody actually just feels disturbed, but maybe in many ways, some other people will grab bricks with you and, and begin not only to just, you know, use those bricks to disturb the peace, but in many ways, find ways to use those bricks to start building new ideas, to start building new possibilities, to start building new capacities that, and, 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 and capacities, and I think of capacities as houses, building homes for, for folk that, that you would never have suspected to ever be in the circle, in the location, in the spaces of your heart and in your mind and in your ethic and in your policies and in your morals, because all of a sudden you're throwing bricks and people are throwing bricks at each other to the point that you have to start building. We're building. We are building 
if I may, in the throwing of a brick, we're, we're, we're building upon the possibility. Some of us, we've got to teach our children how to throw bricks, throw bricks for their friends. Because why? Because of racism, sexism. And do it in a way where people have to actually deal with the fact that they have to start building with the bricks that you're throwing. You're giving them a work to do. You're giving them labor. I get it's metaphorical. You're like, what? Oh, come on. What, what are you talking? It, it, it's, it's doing that kind of building capacity. It's that kind of ethical capacity that makes us better human beings. You only grab bricks when you when you know that you've got a good foundation. You caught that. It's the reason why you need to have a foundation that is authentic. And it's not filled with cracks of despair that you're doing the therapeutic work or meeting with someone to, to counsel you to heal some of the, the foundational areas that have been challenged. When, when my foundation had to be repaved again before I could really step into my queer possibility. My foundation was completely, in many ways, I thought it was solid but there were cracks in it that still weren't filled because I, I had had enough religious formula, but I didn't have enough. In many ways, I didn't see myself as a site of spiritual act. I didn't see myself as a spiritual act, as someone worth Wow, that's what I'm talking. Let's let let's 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 use that word there, right? Worth as an act of spirituality. Integrity as an act of spirituality. And so the foundation, the foundation, the foundation had to, required for, for me to be to, to pave the foundation again, to, to look at the structure again, and then. Look at all the things I was reading to figure out what was my ethical queer possibility. What was it? What was holding me together? What was holding me together? Beyond fancy texts that I was reading, beyond maybe getting together with other people in congregational spaces, what was it? My bricks have always been rooted. Any brick that I throw is always about reimagining. Because the reimagining allows for the possibility to take place. If you had a brick, if you were going to throw one, what would be the brick that you would throw that would build on the possibility? What would it be? What would be the name of that brick? What would be the name of that brick. What would you, what would be inscribed on it if you had to throw it? If you could throw, some might throw love. You know, James Baldwin reminds us, as I conclude, 
I think of something very, very powerful. I'm gonna quote it from my phone because I, you know, I, I want to make sure the quote is right. I hope y'all don't mind. I think we can both enjoy it. We, we, we as either non-theistic and theistic people can enjoy this. James Baldwin, uh, beautiful critical uh, thinker and free thought. Um, and free thought as well, um, says, if the concept of God has any validity or any use, it can only be to make us larger, freer, and more loving. If God cannot do this, then it is time to get rid of them. It is time to get rid of them. Choose your bricks rise wisely, especially during pride. Know what brick you want to throw. Just keep in mind, allow for it to have the possibility to make you larger, freer, and more loving than what you ever imagined. And when you throw it at someone, they're gonna go through the same process of being larger, freer, and more loving than they could ever imagine. Y'all have a wonderful night. Love yourself in the process.